I started to save in Norway, and it didn't go to plan. I wanted to do something that had a bit of a spin on it. Thanks to a wheel, I got the three challenges of no scouting, no board requests, and having to do a capital city challenge. Several more wheel spins later, and chat boats resulted in a save in Norway. Now, I could have chosen Volarenga, who are the only side in Norway's capital, Oslo, to have a club in the Elisetarian. Excellent training and youth facilities, while having several promising talents. However, my dummy brain decided to let my Twitch chat choose which club from Oslo to pick. And of course, they didn't choose the one I wanted. Instead, they went with Kfum Oslo, which is a sports branch of a local YMCA. Average training facilities, and they're not even a professional club. So with a cleverly named crew as manager, the goal was to build this team as promotion favorites despite the constraints. I got around the no scouting by just offering player trials. Constraints or not, I thought there were some decent players for this level, and Kehum weren't too bad in the season preview. Plus, with a couple of signings, the plan was to push for promotion. Then comes the problem, the formation choice. My eyes! I was testing out a formation I made in inspiration from Liverpool's new style of play. Although on the surface, it looks similar to a pirate hook or sailboat. Still, it was working in my tests, so it was used in my first fixture versus Osane. Here we go. Oh no. Hmm. The problem is that these guys are not technically, physically, or mentally within eight levels of Liverpool's players. They can understand the basics, but they can't ping a ball like Trent, dance and twirl like Mo, or cover the ground Hendo does. Well, that's a little awkward, and what happens when you stop writing a script for over a month? All these instructions, team and player, resembles telling a guy only starting to learn how to draw to recreate the bloody Mona Lisa. My dumb mind thought, ah, we're at home. Surely they'll figure it out. Okay. All right, time to blow it up. Making things a tad simpler worked. 63 minutes in, Nia was sent in behind to get one back. Then I went bold and went guns blazing for an equalizer, which made it easier for Osane to win the game. I hope you learned something from that match on how to not FM. You'll probably learn more. Like how I basically trained this tactic for an entire preseason to then throwing it in the dumpster. Now, two systems were set up. A 4-1-2-1-2 and a 4-4-2. Did I have a philosophy? No, I just didn't want to embarrass myself while getting raided by the biggest football manager streamer to have his viewers see my fraudulence versus Birne, the former club of Holland and Schaland. Or is it Schaland? Norwegians, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing any of your words correctly. It only took seven minutes to concede this time. As everyone was seeing Birne getting chance after chance and win a penalty, hope was alive as our keeper Vedelaire stopped it. The XG at half made me think I should be working at this hot dog stand. So I made more team instructions, which confused the keeper. Then we conceded another penalty, which they actually converted. It couldn't hurt to try the 4-4-2, and we actually scored. Maybe I am a tactical genius. We're well out of position. A cross in, and it's a... That sentence probably shouldn't be said again, especially when they had over four expected goals. One lesson I learned was the 4-4-2 was it. But I had to push the right mid position further up to support our new Aussie. Using it against Rofoss was probably the most enjoyable time I had with the save so far. We drew nil-nil. A first point and a clean sheet. What's there not to love? Why are the fans booing me? What about an away performance to Grow Rude? They were another option to pick from Oslo, and the wrong choice was seemingly made since they sliced open a defense. However, it was getting somewhat late, so the only choice we had was lump it up to the big man who we signed before the season started. And he nodded it down to Svindland for the equalizer. It wouldn't be a win. Oh crap, they're in behind and our goalkeeper's in no man's land. Pain. At least we actually drew Ranheim away from home. The team apparently wasn't suffering enough. With IL Stuarsdals blink away, we conceded five minutes in. Even worse, we were actually creating scoring chances. Pavel Vinal hit the bar, Rash then does the same thing off a free kick, while Dahl gets stopped on the follow-up. It's not as if our opponents weren't missing chances either, but that doesn't fit my narrative. So ignore them is something I could do until they got a second before halftime and a garbage third goal after the break. Later, our right back lost a sprint race despite having a two meter advantage for their fourth and pathetic defending on their fifth. Showing my fury to them didn't help the situation. What if we don't do anything? Our opponent scored in the third minute. <sighs> okay, I was at the tactics fault there. I literally didn't know what I was doing. So I did something I've never done. Use a preset tactic. 
Surprisingly, we got one back in the second half. The Tinker Man was here, and K Boom would continue to fight and equalize the match. The vibes were here, the music was playing. They'd get a fourth, and I sensed a bit of an issue with the team. Regardless, there was something there, so I thought I would implement the preset tactic. I know I'll get comments saying to stop changing things so much. I know. We all can't be football managerial geniuses like you under pressure. Sorry, I'm still annoyed the left back I bought is playing against us rather for us. Then the club got its first win. Good news, everyone. Versus a fourth tier side. And only won 1 0. I couldn't care less who the opponents were. Even if we were dunking on 13 year olds like Michael Owen, I'd still celebrate. Could we translate this back to the league? I mean, kind of. It's another point on the board, although the club was still in last place. Not ideal, especially when first place Braun is next. However, Gon must have been shining down on me, as their player Blomber two-footed our guy from behind, getting sent off. Maybe our day. Oh. How are we conceding a penalty? They would also score off a free kick. Just my luck. Then to add to the piss fest, this happened in the second half. What? What was that for? Apparently, our defender was a little too forceful here, despite getting the ball first. Even when we got a chance, they were wasted, since these guys wouldn't be able to smack the Empire State building from one yard out. Going into the 10th match day versus Sungdal, there weren't many expectations, but if you're gonna go try and tackle the ball, don't miss and run two meters past the guy. Despite the silliness, including their own, it was nil-nil. In the 40th minute, we then went down and scored the opener. We scored! Luis Mori! Don't worry, we only had to wait 30 seconds to actually score an onside goal. Having a lead going into halftime is rare, but could we keep it? We had one challenge left in the 86th minute as Michael was running in behind. No! No! Oh, it's offside. We survived and won our first match of the league. This would be a great building block for the rest of the campaign if it was any club other than k -Foom. Our following match against relegation rival Start was far from good. This is a game on the schedule you have to win at home. But clearly, we didn't think so. This was a new low, and the board was tired of this tomfoolery. Tell me, why are we playing like shit? Thinking of an excuse in my head, none of them could really explain why we were awful. So... This is my first job. I'd appreciate a little more patience. Like they haven't been patient enough. I'll take that in consideration, but what are we gonna do about the results? Just give me a little more time to turn things around. I guess we're prepared to do that. We then went on to lose the next game, 3-0. Meeting. My office. This time, the meeting led to a requirement. In FM, when you're on the verge of the sack, you can get a point total goal. Usually, it's an amount that can be achievable if you start performing better. But bossmen decide that in five matches, we needed 11 points. So basically, three wins and two draws, or four wins. I told him he was insane, since we barely even had half of that and tried to get a Lord to no avail. It might have been better to resign, but I don't quit. First game, a one all draw to Shied. Second game, a one all draw to Friedrichstad. We've already used up our draws, meaning three victories were required to keep my job. Obviously my life has been a living hell, but I can't be sacked. People would laugh at me. So we did win two fixtures in the Norwegian Cup, so it doesn't count. Bruh. One of them included Shied. You guys couldn't do that in the league? So we faced off against San Nes Ulf, where a win was required to keep my job. They lost four of their last five, so maybe we had a chance. They want a penalty in the third minute. We can't make this up. We can't make this up. We were seeing nothing from K-Foom, and the inevitable sacking became a reality. Now to all of those who wanted me to manage in Norway, I hope you're happy.